Those of you who are building a small home or office network or who would like to extend the capabilities of your current network should definitely pay attention to the content of this review. What I have here is a QNAP QSW 21042T, which is an unmanaged combined 10 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit switch with RJ45 ports. There are two models of this switch available, 2S and 2T version. The one I'm reviewing is a 2T version, which has two 10 gigabit RJ45 ports. The difference is that the 2S version has two SFP plus 10 gigabit ports instead. The rest four 2.5 gigabit ports are the same for both. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have one gigabit switches, but there may be a couple of reasons why it makes sense to switch to 2.5 gigabit or 10 gigabit switch. And this reason is that they already have a 10 gigabit or 2.5 gigabit LAN adapter on their motherboard, but they aren't using its full potential because they don't have fast enough switch which would allow it. Basically, they paid for something they can't use. As you can see here, these LAN ports are present on motherboards with both Intel and AMD chipsets and even the older ones. If this is not your particular case and you have only one gigabit LAN adapter in your PC, then nothing is lost. You can always use a PCI Express 2.5 gigabit, 10 gigabit or even 5 gigabit LAN adapter and install it in a few seconds. Or in case of a laptop, you can use USB Type-C external adapter like this one and plug it in in two seconds. So this is definitely not a problem and it's something solvable. This will help you to achieve faster transfer speeds when moving data on your network. Your NAS or home server spends less time under load because completing your file transfers is faster. You're able to accomplish your data backup in shorter period of time, so you don't mind doing it more often. Also, more computers connected to the network are able to exchange data faster simultaneously. And you are able to work permanently connected to your server with lower or no delays, thanks to higher available bandwidth when doing demanding tasks like video editing, music production, or loading photos if you are a professional photographer. There are, of course, many scenarios this which could be used in. One, for example, is a small home setup where you could have the most data demanding devices connected by 10 gigabit speed and the rest by 2.5 gigabit. I am assuming here you don't have a 10 gigabit internet connection. Or the one which is more professionally oriented where you have it set up like a small office with four client computers and share one 10 gigabit internet connectivity with 10 gigabit connectivity to the server where no client computer connected by 2.5 gigabit is being bandwidth limited. But of course you can set it up however you like. 10 gigabit network infrastructure used to be really expensive, but now it's becoming more affordable. This 10 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit switch is now available for $170 US on Amazon, which is quite interesting. This wasn't possible, or not at least at this price up until recently. So, I'm interested to see how it does. This is all the stuff which was included in the package. A quick installation guide, QSW 21042T switch, a power supply unit, four foot pads, and two screws and two anchors. When we look at the dimensions, we can see that it doesn't take up too much space. It weights 718 grams, which is quite heavy for its size, but it is definitely a good sign. The power adapter weighs 65 grams, which is 8 grams more than my USB-C phone charger. The length of the cable with a jack plug at the end is 145 centimeters. A long cable is always useful because it gives you some possibilities for cable routing when plugging it into electricity. The adapter itself has a 12 volt output and is able to deliver up to 12 watts. 
This value roughly tells us what would be the maximum power draw of the switch, but I'll measure it later anyway. And now let's take a look at the box in more detail. Let's start with a little magnet test. I'll take this little red magnet and I'll put it on the surface of the switch to see if it holds up. So it looks like the top side is made of metal, it's holding well. Now I'll try the right side. Yeah, same thing. Now the left side. Yeah. Now the back. Yeah, holds well. Now I'll try the bottom part. So, yeah, no one was saving on material. And now the front, I'm really interested to see because it has different shade of black, but it looks like it's still made of metal. That's definitely a good sign because it tells us that it's well built and I like to see that always. When we look at the top side of the switch, we can see that it has two stickers on it. The first one says that it is an unmanaged switch, which means that you can't manually set any parameters on it, like port speed or duplex mode. They are auto-negotiating. All devices connected to it belong to the same broadcast domain, so no setting VLANs. It's just plug and play. But for a basic home or small office use, this is ideal. Then it mentions here that it has 4 2.5 gig and 2 10 gig RJ45 ports. We'll look at them later. And that the total switch bandwidth is 60 gigabits per second. How is this possible? <laughs> 2 times 10 equals 20, and in duplex mode it is 40. And the same thing applies with 4 times 2.5, which is 10, by 2 is 20. 40 and 20 equals 60. So that's how they go to this number. Then it says that it's using Broadcom and Realtek solution. That means it's using chips from these two companies. And the second sticker is completely redundant. Actually, both of them are useless. Just something you need to get rid of. When you buy a switch like this, you usually know its speed. It's not like you go and pick this randomly at a grocery store and then check what you brought home. I'll try removing both later. Now I'll open the box so that we can take a look inside. As you can see here, there are no fans installed, which means that it's passively cooled and therefore completely silent. The chips are cooled by this large metal heatsink and the air can get inside from both sides of this chassis because it has holes in it and also from the bottom, as you can see here. Because I have already been using this switch for a month before shooting this part of the video, I can also confirm that there is no coil whine or any other noises coming from it, which is great. You can have it in your office or a living room without any noise disturbance. So now that we know this, we can continue. When we look at the back side, we can see that it's held by three screws and that's pretty much what we can say about it. Now, when we look at the bottom part, we can see that it has these holes, which are for attaching it to the wall, and also these four spaces, which are for the rubber legs. So let's put them on right now. As you can see, the rubber legs are 
quite thick and tall but I guess it's a good thing because if you are putting it on some delicate surface you won't scratch it and it's also not going to slide so I like that when we look at the front side of the switch we can see that it has two status LEDs here the first one is a power LED which lights up green when the switch is on and the second one is a loop indicator which lights up red when the network cables are connected in a loop otherwise it's off then we have here six RJ45 ports the first two run at 10 gigabit speed but they can also run at 5 gigabit, 2.5 gigabit, 1 gigabit or 100 megabit speed the other four ports are 2.5 gigabit but they can also run at 1 gigabit and 100 megabit speed each of the ports has two status LEDs above it the green one lights up only when the port is running at its full speed and the orange one only when the port is running at any lower speed than the maximum speed of the port and this applies for all the ports and last but not least is this DC input that's where you plug in the cable from the power adapter which was included and plugging it in is very easy it doesn't require much force and that's all we can say about this side of the switch so let's now move on to the power draw test the first thing I'm going to do is to plug the switch and see what is its idle power draw as we can see the power draw has settled around 4.4 4.5 watts and now I'm going to connect the first 10 gigabit LAN adapter this one is in my home server as we can see the power draw has settled around 5.6 5.7 watts so now I'm going to connect the second 10 gigabit LAN adapter this one is in my workstation as we can see the power draw has settled around 7 watts 6.97 it's fluctuating and now I'm going to connect the first 2.5 gig LAN adapter as we can see the power draw has settled around 7.6 7.7 watts so now I'll plug in the second two and a half gig LAN adapter this one is from my laptop as we can see the power draw has settled around 8.3 8.5 watts it's fluctuating Now I'll add the first 1 gigabit LAN adapter As we can see the power draw has settled around 8.6 8.5 watts it's fluctuating and now I'll add the last 1 gigabit LAN adapter this one is providing internet and as we can see the power draw has settled around 
8.6, 8.8 watts, it's fluctuating and that's when all the ports are connected. What is worth mentioning is that the last two ports are not running at their full speed, they are running only at 1 gigabit speed. So let's move on to the performance testing. To test 10 gigabit ports, I ran a traffic generator for 5 minutes to see how much data I can transfer, at what speed, and if there are going to be any drops in performance. As you can see, I was able to achieve transfer speed of 9.49 gigabits per second consistently without any significant drops. This is an expected value because some bandwidth is always lost as system or transport overhead. And I wasn't using Jumbo frames, just a default setup. In total, there were 332 gigabytes transferred during this test and no issues occurred. Let's take a look at a small file copy test to demonstrate expected file transfer speeds in Windows. I'm doing this just to give you an idea what speed you can expect. Copying an almost 15 GB MP4 file ran at speed of 1.1 GB per second and took just 13 seconds to transfer. You always have to make sure the drives, network adapters and cables on both ends are fast enough to handle such speeds. Otherwise, the transfer speed will be bottlenecked by them. So let's move on to testing 2.5 gigabit ports. This time I used my laptop and 2.5 gigabit USB Type-C LAN adapter to generate the traffic. As you can see, I'm getting 2.37 gigabits per second consistently, which is also an expected value. Rest of the bandwidth is being used for system overhead. In 5 minutes, there were 82.9 GB of data transferred. For the curious ones, I also repeated this test using an internal PCI Express LAN adapter and the result was the same. And finally, let's check out the file copy test using 2.5 GB port. I copied the same file as last time, but I found out my old laptop's SATA SSD was having trouble writing at this speed so I used my workstation with M.2 SSD to perform this test. As you can see, the auto-negotiated speed with the switch is 2.5 gigabit. The transfer speed is 283 megabytes per second and the write transfer took 52 seconds. So this is what you can expect. If you want to be able to achieve these speeds, you need proper cables. QNAP has this table which shows you which category of cables you need to achieve certain speed. I tested all mentioned categories of cables listed here and they worked with the switch. Just for fun, I tried running 10 gigabit speed connecting two 10 gigabit LAN adapters using 25 meter long CAT5V cable to this switch and it worked, which some people may find useful. However, I don't recommend doing it if you are building a new home network infrastructure. If you don't know which cable to buy, get a CAT 6A cable for all scenarios and you'll be fine. Because the maximum number of cables connected is 6, you can't overspend too much and you can use those cables later for achieving higher transfer speeds. If you already have CAT 5E cables, you can use them for connecting devices to 2.5 gigabit ports. So let's sum it up. As the title of the video suggested, I was very happy with how this switch performed. It is well built, runs completely silent. It is very power efficient. It switches off ports when they are not being used. It runs stable at advertised speeds and the auto-negotiating function of the ports runs without any problems. So overall, it gets my recommendation. If you have any questions about it, please leave them below the video. I'll do my best to answer. And for this video, that's it. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.